at you battlers, you know what it is, Jay Devin back at it with another Go Battle League video. So um, I did just end stream, I'm just getting off of stream and yeah, as you can see, I mean, I, we did go positive, which, you know, that's always good. I didn't go negative, so I'm not trending downwards, but I didn't do anywhere near as well as I would have hoped to to end things for the Ultra League. And as you know, Bruh. this is going to be a Master League themed video because we are going to be jumping into Masters League starting tomorrow, which is Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So I did previously a video um, for Masters League. It was basically, um, I think it was the four must-haves for um, Master League, which the, the video, I think it, it did pretty well. And as far as the contents of the video, I still stand by it. It's valid, except one pick I included in that, uh, you know, the four must-haves was Swamper. Now, my justification, I guess, my reasoning for including Swamper in that list or as part of that four is because of the earthquake threat it can have to Dialga. Um, for the most part, I still kind of stand by that, whereas, you know, Swampert, in theory, can answer Dialga better than the other popular water pick which is a uh, Kyogre. So now at this point, I guess, if I were to remake that video or revisit it, I really would replace Swampert with Kyogre in that role, just because Kyogre, especially in the Masters League with Waterfall, now has access to Surf, and whether you go Thunder or Blizzard as a secondary move, if you have a secondary move, um, overall in the Masters League, he'll just function much better as a water type as compared to Swampert. But again, my reasoning for doing Swamper was the Earthquake against the Dialga, okay? That, that's my defense. All right, and the first Pokemon on this list and or the Pokemon that's going to be in this video is going to be none other than a Master League Mewtwo. Yes, now, as you can see, currently mine does not have um, Psy Strike. Um, I definitely recommend you run one that has Psy Strike in Master's League if you have it. However, even a variant like this where, you know, let's say if you're like me and you have a um, double moved Mewtwo in Master's League that is maxed out but does not have Psy Strike, you can still have some play with it. Definitely there's valid play. Currently on this one, I'm running Psycho Cut, Shadow Ball, and Focus Blast. The Shadow Ball is going to be able to answer the overpowering, super dominating Giratina origin form. Um, it can basically one-shot it. And then the Focus Blast obviously would be there to answer pretty much everything else and anything that it doesn't resist, but also it would be super effective to the uh, Dialga, right? Um, and also Focus Blast is going to be able to one-shot. I'm pretty sure it one-shots. If it doesn't, it'll get really close, but it'll one-shot the uh, next pick on the list, which is going to be none other than your big thick boy over here. This is uh, this is actually my inventory, by the way. Um, Snorlax. Snorlax is going to be my next Pokemon and or pick on this list that is included for this video. This one that I have maxed out and double moved currently, unfortunately, is not perfect. Um, perfect, obviously, is going to be ideal, but this one does have 15 attack. Uh, that's beside the point. Um, Snorlax is definitely considerable, and you probably already know this, but if you don't and you're new to PvP while we jump into Masters League here for Season 1 in Go Battle League, Snorlax is considerable, obviously, because of his typing and having access to Lick, Body Slam, and Earthquake, okay? So if you lock in a Giratina Origin in a matchup with the Lick, um, it's, it's basically Farm City. Now, the one thing to consider, since Ominous Wind was nerfed as part of the recent rebalance on a Giratina... Um, origin, I think you can definitely account on running into a Giratina Origin that is actually running Dragon Pulse as a second move. That is definitely going to be a possibility. A lot of people argue that um, Ominous Wind still um, has valid validity, right? Like it still has merit as a move. And I agree, you know, for the boost chance, if you get the boost, there's definitely reasoning for people to still be running the Shadow Ball, or the Shadow Ball and Ominous Wind um, standard move set on a Giratina Origin. But you know, if you see a Dragon Pulse Giratina Origin, Snorlax isn't going to be quite as hard of an answer, but overall he still is a very good and a solid answer for a Giratina Origin, okay? Um, but yeah, the Lick Body Slam will basically hit everything in the meta, and then definitely you, I would recommend going for Earthquake as the additional move, because you want that one-shot potential. Um, I, I actually don't think it one-shots. It might. <laughs> it's Master's League. Everything is as bulky as it possibly gets. Everything at it is that is full. Um, stat potential for these Pokemon, right? Because they're all maxed out, level 40. Most of them going to be perfect. Uh, but that Earthquake, yeah. Super effective, huge, massive damage to a Dialga. Um, I do also think there's still arguments and credibility in running um, a Snorlax that has Lick, Body Slam, and Super Power. Super Power can be very, very useful as well, too. But at this point, I'm running Earthquake, and I would recommend running Earthquake. Um, the next Pokemon on the list, um, we started to see some use for this 
um, quite a bit in the preseason. Here we go. Rapierre. So Rapierre with Rock Wrecker, right? So the fast move I believe you're going to prefer is um, Mud Slap because you're going to hit Dialga for super effective with the Mud Slap. And then you would want um, Rock Wrecker for sure, but then also either Super Power or Surf realistically. You know, you could run another move set on top of Rock Wrecker and there could be arguments for other move sets, but um, really overall what I recommend as far as coverage, especially against the Masters like Meta, is going to be a... Uh, uh, Mud Slap, Rock Wrecker, and then Super Power and or Surf. Probably Super Power as the additional move, um, but also probably Surf. You, you, you could really go either way. Um, surf would definitely help you in the mirror, so that's why maybe Surf, but I think I, I think either one's going to be viable. Um, but Rhyperior, having that um, neutral coverage, being able to hit Dialga for super effective with each and every Mud Slap, and then Rock Wrecker against basically everything else, hits so hard. There's almost nothing in the meta besides steel types that want to take a rock wrecker. And, you know, if you're running super power and or surf as your second moves, you're also still going to have offensive charge move damage and coverage against these steel types, namely Dialga and Metagross, right? Okay. Um, so that's going to bring me into the next Pokemon, which is your boy right here, Machamp. Okay. So, uh, it, it was it was kind of tough, honestly. I had to stop. You'll probably notice that like a jump cut in the editing afterwards or whatever. But I ended up deciding to recommend Inma Champ instead of Con Conclador in this video. I mean, Conclador does have access to Stone Edge and Dynamic Punch. You could, Conclador is definitely a very valid fighting option. I'm not saying Machamp's going to be better. In some situations, Con Conclador might be preferred, right? Uh, but I am recommending Machamp in this video to run as a fighting type if you run a fighting type because he has access to um, counter, this one actually has close combat, um, but counter, cross chop, and rock slide. You could also go close combat, honestly. Close combat can work as well. But let me pull up one that has cross chop. Might be this one. No, that's close combat, my shiny. Um, I think my ultra league one has cross chop. Okay, here we go. So pretend this is maxed out and this is a Masters League Machamp, but counter, rock slide, and cross chop. Now, the reason I recommend that, um, really, again, not to be repetitive, but you could go cross chop and or close combat. I think both could work. Um, I'm, I would recommend and I would go with cross chop only because if you manage to get locked in against a Dialga, obviously you're taking massive, huge amounts of damage super, super quickly. Like it happens like boom, 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 boom from the dragon breath, right? It's going to happen super quick. So you'll definitely want to make champ at full health, but if they do manage to you know, swap in and you have them locked and you're able to swap an answer with Machamp, just as an example, the counter cross chop combo is, it's either going to put on massive shield pressure or you're just going to straight up delete their Dialga and win against it, which in the Masters League meta is huge because Dialga is the big boss. It's something you really need to shut down if you can't win the mirror because you don't have a perfect end or double moved with um you know draco meteor as an example in those in those situations you might have to rely on some of these off meta picks like this to win against the top tier dialga teams because dialga is just the master league basically boils down to dialga okay so the counter rock slide cross chop again rock slide will basically just be coverage against everything it can cover the togekiss it'll at least be neutral to uh the giratina origin and honestly against a kyogre you're probably just going to want to go with cross chop. But yeah, the coverage and you know being able to actually shut down Dialga as a Pokemon if the situation, you know, gives you that opportunity, that's that's massive. That's really massive. Even with with Machamp being a little bit squishy, it can be a very reliable counter. Again, if it's played right. It might be a little risky, but this is one of those high risk, high reward picks. Which is going to bring me to my last pick and or the final recommendation for this video. And there's actually one more, so I think we're gonna get I think we're gonna get a, a bonus pick for this video. Bonus pick, right, fam? Let's go, pog, pog, pog. We're gonna we're gonna get a bonus pick. Um, so it's five Pokemon to consider, I guess, for Master League, and then plus a, a bonus Pokemon. Bonus pick, right, fam? Let's go, pog, pog, pog. <laughs> but uh, the fifth one, the fifth and final one, at least, is going to be uh, Gyarados here. This is my perfect, right? Yeah, Gyarados. So as you can see, maxes out at thirty-three ninety-one. Water and Flying type. Um, should be super common for the most part, unless you're like a very, unless you're a brand new player, for the most part, everyone should have a Gyarados. Um, if you do not have one, I'm sorry, that's a bummer. I don't think it's realistically that hard to get, 
but at the same time, if you live in an area like I do, I don't see Magikarp spawns all the time unless it's an event. Um, it might it might be tough to get if that's the case. I think worst case scenario, you should just try trading with people, honestly. Find somebody to trade with who has one and or has a bunch of Magikarp and do it that way. But um, Gyarados, so Dragon Breath, a Hydro Pump, and then Crunch is the moveset I would run and recommend. Um, I really don't think there's validity in any other moveset or any other way to run Gyarados. Um, not even with Waterfall. You definitely want that Dragon Breath for the neutral coverage against a um, Dialga, and you also want the um, super effective Dragon Breath damage against the Giratina Origin. And then the Crunch, obviously, you can cover the Psychics, right? So you can hit the Mewtwo with a Crunch. If they have a Mewtwo, you can hit the Giratina Origin. Crunch will be super effective as a Dark-type move to Giratina Origin's part Ghost typing. So that's why Crunch. And then Hydro Pump really can be a, basically a um, nuke potential for other picks. Essentially, that's that's what it is. So I, I would I would consider Gyarados viable. It's more of a budget option and kind of a, an off meta pick and option to run against meta teams that uh, that can work for you and actually bring you success. I ran Gyarados quite a bit in the preseason for Masters League, and I did like it a lot. I tried a variant with Waterfall. I don't know if I liked the Waterfall variant that much. I mean, it kind of worked, but overall, I feel like you should just go Dragon Breath, Hydro Pump, and then Crunch. Um, so for the for the bonus pick, it's uh, uh, you already know about Dragonite, so that's not going to be the bonus pick. I don't need to talk about Dragonite. I'm sure there's thousands of YouTube videos out there for Pokemon Go PvP right now where they talk about Dragonite for the Masters League. I think I think they are all valid. Dragonite definitely has some use. Um, I would argue at this point that it doesn't have quite that much use because you need to have Dragonite in the right matchup, and if you don't, you know, already lose with the Dragonite to a Togekiss. You're probably going to end up losing with the Dragonite to the Dialga. So yeah, yeah, Dragonite. I still say has some play, but I don't think it's really that useful um, at the end of the day. That's why it's not going to be the bonus Pokemon. That's also why it's not going to be featured in this in this video. This is going to be the bonus Pokemon. Bonus pick, hi fam. Let's go, Pog Pog Pog. For this video, for that, this is the sixth, I guess, the sixth Pokemon that wasn't originally planned to be in the video, but that's. That's good old Garchomp here. So Garchomp maxed out. Mine is currently running this set of Mudshot, Outrage, and then Sandtoon. I have seen before there was a, <laughs> a funny battle I watched, or um, yeah, I watched a, a, a good friend play a while ago while we were out doing some late night grinding, but they had Mudshot, Earthquake, and Sandtoon. <laughs> that was crazy. But it, realistically, I mean, you, you might run into it either way at, with any moveset, and you could also, I guess, use it with any moveset, but as far as consistency, in the Masters League. Um, what I'd recommend is the Mudshot, Sandtomb, and then Outrage. So now the reason you would even run Garchomp in the first place, um, obviously he's gonna he's gonna get shredded by those Dragon Breasts from Giratina, and he also will get shredded by the charms from Togekiss. So really like Sandtomb is the reason you run Garchomp. And it's not that Sandtomb Sandtomb does not do a lot of damage, okay? Sandtomb is not gonna delete Dialga, even though it's super effective. It'll it'll do a chunk of damage, but really you want Sandtomb for that guaranteed defense debuff, and then you can do an aggressive swap, which honestly you want to wait till your opponent's locked in first, because if you debuff them and then swap, then they're just gonna swap and counter what you swap into. So it's it's kind of a it's kind of a play that you have to be like really skilled, um, I guess, and you have to have a lot of practice, or you just have to know how to do it basically for the Masters League. But if you do it right, Garchomp, Garchomp will win games. Garchomp will close. Um, it's kind of an iffy pick. Again, like even taking neutral, I'm pretty sure he still is going to take neutral from water damage against the likes of Kyogre as an example. But um, in that matchup, you know, you still have the opportunity to go for an Outrage, which will do huge, mega, gigantic amounts of damage because Garchomp is still a very aggressive Pokemon in terms of its um, stat spread and, you know, its attack weighting in Pokemon Go PvP. So, yeah, Garchomp definitely is a valid pick and has some use in Masters League against the Masters League meta. Um, but that was it as far as all the Pokemon, and that is basically it as well for the video too. So let me know what you think about the Pokemon that I've included in this video. Are there other Pokemon you think are considerable and viable for the Masters League meta that I did not include in this video? And if there are, Bruh. I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> if there are, what are what are your argument for those Pokemon? I guess you know, are you pro Machamp or pro Conklador? Are you pro 
Gardevoir instead of running Togekiss. You know, whatever you want to say, let's have some discussion in the comments below about the Masters League because it's coming super soon tomorrow. For some people who's, who are watching this video, it might have happened already. You might already be in the Masters League. But um, yeah, yeah. Remember as well too, before we close out the video, normally they have put the Community Day box for sale for um, Community Day like a, a day before, a day or two before. So what I anticipate, I guess, and what I predict, I, I don't know. What I think is going to happen is we're going to see that community day, community day box go for sale in the store as an option right after season one Masters League ends, which is again going to be on the 24th. So that is two weeks and a one day from now. And when that happens, as we've seen in the code, um, th this could change, okay? So word of warning, this could change. Don't necessarily count your eggs before they hatch. We don't know for sure. But if and when it goes live on the 24th, 24th um, we are going to see Elite TMs included. I think currently they're including one fast Elite TM and one charged Elite TM. And as you know, with the Elite TMs, you can pick and choose any um, legacy move for Pokemon. Again, from what we know from right now, you can choose any move that was exclusive to a raid day or community day. So all those legacies are going to become available. I hope they include all legacy moves, period. But what we know for sure, it's going to be all exclusive raid day and or community day moves. So if you have picks that you want to invest into or use a TM on, jump on it, you know, really as quick as possible. I think realistically, I don't know how many I'm going to get. It really depends on how much it is. I don't think we know that quite yet. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that. Right after this ends, remember after that, we are still going to have one week before season two in Pokemon Go Battle League where we can pick and choose between any league. So after Community Day for the rest of that week until the first, um, we can choose between Great League, Ultra League, or Masters League. So get the Elite TMs as soon as possible so you can take advantage of having those Pokemon with those moves for that week in between. But yeah. Battlers, that is it for this video. As always, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you feel my vibe. Power up, punch the notification bell for all that PvP content. We'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I hit rank 10 this season. Have, have a good stinking day.